All right, let's start with the least time consuming route. You're gonna steal someone else's hard work. If you've got a battle map already assembled into a juicy .jpg .png .wwe, then let's look at how to upload that bad boy and get it situated. Open up your game, hit the map tab up top, head over to add a new map, and then upload your image of choice over in this tab here. My screen might look slightly different from yours. That's because again, you gotta be using the VTT Enhancement Suite. I know, it's not in the Chrome extension store, it's probably not endorsed by Roll20, but it's still dope, and it's still being updated as of 9.12. That was like four days ago. God, I hope I upload this soon. You're gonna want something high res, crispy, 4K, 8K, like this magnificent piece from Tube Minute Tabletop. He's got loads of top-notch pay-what-you-want content, and I highly encourage you to kick him some cash where you can and download away without a guilty conscience. He didn't sponsor me. I mean, you you could. I'd give him like a billboard at your Papa John's franchise. I don't know that you got your map of choice. Make sure you're going to be able to size it properly. Usually the default map size works fine, but if you've got a really big or really small piece, it doesn't hurt to open up the page settings here and set the appropriate height and width. If you don't know how many pixels are in an image, pull it up in whatever operating system you use, check the properties, and you should see a pixel ratio. Just copy that height and width number into Roll20, and you're going to have a map that is exactly as big as the image. It's just drag and drop, ready to go. Now, how do I upload this map, you might be asking, feeling more in touch with your grandma than ever before. First, tab up to the top right, you're going to see the art library. You're going to go there, click the upload button, and put in whatever image you need. That's going to pop up now under recent uploads down here in the bottom right. And before you go clicking and dragging, get your finger off that mouse, get it off. Stop it. Go up to the top left of the window and make sure that you're on the map and background layer. You're probably on the objects and tokens layer by default. You don't want to drag and drop anything map wise if you're on the objects layer. Uh, not only because that's the layer that tokens are supposed to move around on, but because it defaults to a 5x5 grid square, and that's not what your map is. Now that you've got the thing uploaded though, I'm going to teach you how to squish it, skew it, turn it all around. First, know that if you just grab a corner and click and drag, that's just going to resize it while keeping the aspect ratio exactly the same. That means it's going to be the same proportion of length and width, but if you wanted to stretch it, skew it, kind of take that pixel ratio and mess it all up, hold shift. This is gonna let you turn a square into a rectangle or whatever you want, you godless heathen. You can also hold alt, because as you might notice, when you let go, it's going to snap to the grid. If you don't want it to do that, hold alt. That way when you let go of left click, it's going to stay exactly where it was when you let go of the mouse button. Same thing also works for moving around objects and tokens. If you're holding Alt when you move it and you let go, it won't snap to the center of a tile. It'll stay exactly where you put it. If you've set your map size accordingly, you just gotta do a basic stretch until it fits close enough. Then you just use your shift click to get it the rest of the way into that corner. Now I'm using a map that came grid free, but maybe yours is already crisscross applesauced. When you upload, you're gonna see a nightmare scenario. Mismatched grids. I know, I know. We can fix this, and your sweet baby map can go on to lead a relatively normal life. Start by verifying you set the map size to the image dimensions. If that didn't fix it, start by holding Alt and use the scroll wheel to zoom in just a little closer, like about this much. Right click and pull up your advanced tools. Using the align to grid tool, you're going to just grab the corner of a tile and drag until it covers a 3x3 three three area. Side note, if you get this really weird glitch that I'm showing on screen where the grid alignment tool doesn't accept the OK command and it just keeps restarting the tool or your screen starts getting progressively wider, just mash the escape key until the tool quits out, at which point you can hover up and hit the X. Reopen the alignment tool and try again. Once you get it actually correct, do the same trick where you mash escape and then hover up to close out of the tool. A lot of maps are made with grids in mind, and they remove them at the end just for this exact reason, to save you this big alignment phase, but as you can see, mine is a good example of that. Uh, matching up the image dimensions has given us an absolutely perfect set of squares. Uh, I mean, look at how the walls line up, or how the stairwell is a clean four squares. Even this little hidden tunnel down here shows it. 
the most narrow part of the tunnel fits exactly one square. But it's not perfect. You can see it matches with the map very well, but if we drop a token in, Suddenly the scale gets a little weird. We have a very tiny boy and a bunch of very big barrels. And maybe that's the world you're running. Maybe he's supposed to be going down a 10 to 20 foot wide stairwell. But I think this would look a little bit better if the token was twice as big. And that's the perfect kind of problem to have when it comes to map alignment. If you can scale it by two or a factor of four even, you're still gonna have the grid intersections lining up perfectly with the walls but you can make it easier to drag and drop tokens that are of the appropriate size and they get along well with the map. You know, I could go on. I've actually got two more of these lined up. This was going to be a 30 minute video, but I'm not sure anybody wanted to sit through all of that. Instead, the next two parts are going to be on dynamic lighting and building your own maps. You brave, adventurous soul, you. Hope you like the music this week. It's by a friend of mine. His name is Jack. We do a music podcast called Blunder Phonics. Well, at least we did. In the meanwhile, if you like my tabletop content, you can catch more of it over at One Shot, One Quill. It's a podcast where a buddy of mine take Twitter suggestions, and we use them to make one-shots. Go over to at dndpod on Twitter, check out a few clips of our show, maybe download an episode or two, and send us a suggestion. Well, it's time to hit that old dusty trail again. Until next time, friends.